In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create a digital text or logo reveal in After Effects without using any plugins. Let's get to it. So here we are in After Effects. I've already created a new 1920 by 1080 30 frames per second composition. Now I'm going to select the type tool and type something. Let's go for wave. Then I'm going to open the align tab and align the text to the center of the composition. After that, I'm going to right click on the text and select pre-compose. Let's call this one text and click OK. This is done so we can easily swap out the text for a different one or maybe even add a logo in the future. Now we need to create the reveal effect using the simple shape layer. But first, let's click away so we're not highlighting this text layer. Then let's go up here, click and hold the rectangle tool until you see the other options. And I'm going to select the ellipse tool. For the fill, I'll go for solid color of white. For the stroke, none, so no stroke. Then from the center of the composition, I'm going to click and drag, holding Control and Shift keys at the same time to create a proportional ellipse, something like this. And then I'm going to align it to the center using the Align tab again. Then hold the Control key and double click on the pen behind tool to center the anchor point. Now I'm going to select the shape layer and press S on the keyboard to see the scale properties. Let's move to the start of the timeline and set the scale to be 0%. Then create a keyframe by clicking on a stopwatch. Let's move forward a few seconds, say 4 seconds, and increase the scale of the shape layer until it completely covers the entire composition. So something like that. And now we need to set the track mat of the text layer to alpha mat. And the way we do that is first we need the track mat settings. So if you don't see them, click toggle switches and mode until you do and set the mode or the track mat of the text layer to shape layer 1. And that does it now. If we preview this, we'll get the simple text reveal. So here we're going to add a couple effects to the shape layer. So let's open effects and presets window. So it's for turbulent displays. Add it to the shape layer one. Now in effect controls, we're going to set amount to 200 and size to 20 and complexity to 10. And this will distort the edges of, of the shape or the text in this case. And the next effect we need is the mosaic. So search for mosaic, it'll be under stylized, so add it to the shape layer as well. And that will transform the edges of the shape to blocks. And we can control the size of the blocks by changing the horizontal and vertical blocks values. And I'm actually going to go for perfectly sized square blocks. And in order to do that, we need to maintain a certain aspect ratio. So since this is the 1920 by 1080 composition, that is 16 by 9. So for that, I'm going to hold the Alt key on the keyboard, click on the stopwatch for vertical blocks, and down here, we're going to add an expression. So let's come to the left, to these icons, and we need this pick whip. So click and hold it and drag it above the horizontal blocks, then let go. That'll automatically fill up the code. At the end of it, we need to add divide by 1.78. Then click away, and that'll link the values together in such a way that they maintain the aspect ratio. We need to make these into the perfectly sized squared blocks. And now I'm going to make the blocks smaller and instead of 10, I'm going to set 100 for the horizontal blocks. And now you will see that we get much smaller blocks and they are perfectly squared. Now, after doing that, we can close this down, then drag and select both layers, right click any of them and select pre-compose. And let's call this one text reveal. Then click OK here. And now we need to duplicate this text reveal layer. So select it, go up to edit, duplicate or press Ctrl D as the shortcut. Now we need to set the mode of this bottom text reveal layer to alpha inverted mat. So again, in the track mat settings, let's set the track mat of it to text reveal, the one above it. And now to the right, you'll see two boxes and we need the, we need the second one. So check the second box and it will say mat is inverted and this is it. Now let's go back to the effects and presets window, search for fill effect, drag and drop it to the text reveal at the bottom and also search for mini max. Drag and drop it to the bottom as well. Now for the fill, set it to be white, click OK. Now for the minimax, let's not touch it just yet. So here, if we preview this, you will see that we are getting this fraction of blocks that is going across and we can control how wide it is by offsetting the top text reveal layer forward in time. So if I drag this forward, you can see that the fraction of blocks is getting thicker. So I'm actually going to offset it by 10 frames. So come to 10 frames and move it over like that. This will give us a decent amount of blocks. And you will see that once the blocks go across, they leave this outline that is caused by the anti-aliasing and we can easily hide it using the minimax effect. So select the bottom layer and in the minimax settings, let's set operation to be minimum, channel to be alpha, and now set radius to one and that should get rid of it. If it doesn't, you can increase it to two or three. So in my case, it is completely gone so we can proceed. 
So after you've adjusted the settings accordingly, we can drag and select both layers, right click any of them and pre-compose them again. Let's call this one scan effect. Now let's open the project panel and drag and drop the text reveal layer underneath it. And here we can start building the actual look of this scan effect. So again, go back to the effects and presets window and here let's search for find edges, add it to the scan effect, then search for colorama and also add it to the scan effect. Now go back to the effect controls panel and let's focus on colorama first. Let's open the input phase. So we're going to set get phase from alpha and in the add phase, we're going to select the scan effect. Now let's open the output cycle and in the use preset palette, we're going to set it to hue cycle for now. And then open the modify settings and uncheck modify alpha. And now let's go back to the find edges and check the invert box. And that will slightly change the look of the blocks. And here if we do the preview, we'll get a lot of different colors. That is because we've set the output to be the hue cycle. Now we can adjust this later. So for now, let's just leave it as it is. Go back to the effects and presets and search for glow effect. So now if you have the deep glow plugin available, feel free to use it because you might end up getting better glows. But since I'm keeping this tutorial a non-plugin, I'm going to use the default glow. So in the stylize, I'm going to drag the glow to the scan effect. And then I'm going to leave it at default settings, then select the glow and press Ctrl D to duplicate it. For the second glow, I'm going to set the glow radius to be 100. Now, if this amount of glow is not enough for you, you can duplicate the glow one more time and further increase the glow radius to something like 500. But in my case, I'll stick to two glows. Now here we have the blocks with the glow effect applied. So if we go back to the colorama effect in the use preset palette, here we have many different presets available and each one contains different colors. So the hue cycle will give you the most amount of colors and something like ramp blue will give you just one color with different shades. And the variations you can go about this are pretty much limitless. You have so many different ones available. And also you can change the blending mode of the scan effect layer. So if you come down here to the modes, and right now it's set to normal and that's how it looks. So if we set it to something like screen, that'll completely change up the look of it. You can see, and now it looks maybe even better. I actually prefer it to be this way. So in my opinion, it looks really, really cool in the screen. And you can try out something like add or maybe look into the other ones. I'm actually going to leave it at screen. And if we do the preview, this is what we have. And now I'm going to add the subtle zoom out throughout the animation. For that, first let's make both layers 3D. So toggle switch the modes and make the layers 3D by checking these 3D icons. And let's add a camera. So go up to a layer, new camera. And I'm going to set 50 millimeter preset and make sure that the enable depth of field is not checked. Then click OK. Now while camera is selected, I'm going to press P on the keyboard to see the position values. And let's go to the start of the animation, something like this. And I'm going to create a keyframe for position. And I'm going to bring the camera closer to the text. So something like negative 1200 should do. And let's move this keyframe to the start of the timeline. And I'm actually going to go forward to the point that we fully see the text. So maybe two seconds. And I'm going to zoom out slightly to maybe negative 2000, something like that. And let's preview this. It looks fine. And now let's drag and select the keyframes, right click any of them, keyframe assistant, easy E, so you can press F9 as the shortcut. Then go to the graph editor while the keyframes are highlighted, right click and make sure edit speed graph is selected. Then let's select any of the points and you will, you will see the yellow handles and we need to drag both of those all the way to the left. So this is what the graph should look like. Now if we exit the graph editor and preview this, you will see that we get a subtle zoom out throughout the animation. And let's also add a background by adding a solid layer. So go up to layer, new solid. I'm going to call this BG. And for the color, let's choose something that would match the scene. Since I've gone for the blue color in the colorama, I'll just select the blue and make it really, really dark. Something like that. Click OK. And let's place the BG layer below every other layer. So it's in the background. So now let's go ahead and preview this from the beginning. And this is what we have at the moment. So now let me show you how easy it is to change the text or even add a logo instead. For that, we need to open the text reveal composition, then open the text. And here we can use a completely different word. So say motion. And if we go back to the render comp, now we have a motion text reveal. Or if you want to add a logo, go back to the text composition and say I'll use the Facebook logo. So drag and drop it here. Just make sure you adjust the sizing and everything, then disable the text that you had in there. 
And if you go back to the render comp, you'll see now we get the Facebook logo reveal in the same way. And as for changing the scale of these blocks, we need to go back to the text reveal. Then select the shape layer and open the effect controls. All we need to do is to adjust the horizontal blocks value. Right now it's set to 100. To make the blocks bigger, we need to decrease the value. So I'll set it to 50. That will make the blocks bigger. So if we go back to the render composition, we should have much bigger blocks going across. Yeah, you can see it is super, super easy and automatically adjust without you having to do anything other than adjust the one value. That's how you create the digital pixel scan text reveal, logo reveal in After Effects without using any plugins. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new. Thanks for watching. See you next one. Peace out.